Gospel of December the 11, 2015 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children who sit in marketplaces and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we have this beautiful gospel, and the Lord is wanting to take us into a situation where we discern, where we can be shown the right way. What he is doing is simple. He's talking about a generation. Is the Lord only talking about the generation of his time or of this generation also? Let us compare ourselves whether we are like those children or not. Why children? Children are somewhat irresponsible. They just act the way they like, they do what they can't, but basically they play. When they want to be playing, they can be quite irresponsible. They don't figure out many things. They don't like to. So those little children sitting in the marketplace, calling one another, we played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We, we played the flute so that you would be happy, but you didn't like it. We sang a dirge, but you never mourn. So neither you like to be mourning, nor to be happy. And then immediately the Lord tells us the comparison. John the Baptist came without eating or drinking, for he fasted and only drank water. And they said, He's possessed by a demon. The Baptist was very harsh in his words. He called especially the Pharisees and scribes generation of serpents. Quite, quite harsh. Why do you come here? The axe is already ready to, is ready to, to cut the tree very harsh words. The Baptist also calls to us in a way that we are confronted, that we are presented with our transgressions, so that we should mourn, that we should, so that we should let ourselves into a situation where we want to be changed, where we can recognize our trespasses and start uh, mourning, start really almost crying for all the things, for having lost the opportunity of redemption. But that is a hard, a very hard way. And then God in His mercy wanted to present us with something else, something much beautiful, much more beautiful, something shining and resplendent. And that is why He says, we played the flute for you so that you would get up and dance out of happiness. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, but they rejected him also. He's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. When we are prideful, then when we are full of pride, then we start looking to the others down over our shoulder like they are less than us. And that is the, posi the, the position of the Pharisees. Is that your position? That you think that you are so pure that the others are just sinners? And then, perhaps, then you will be precisely in that generation term. How great it is to think that the Son of Man, that is the Son of God, came to rescue what was already lost. As he says, I didn't come for the just, I came for the sinners. 
great news. I'm ready, I'm ready to dance and be happy because even I am able to grasp that salvation, not because I can do anything on my part to gain it other than receiving it, but because it is granted to all of us. All we need to do is to say, yes, I want it. Yet the Lord says, wisdom is vindicated by its deeds, by its works. We can only see the Lord, like I was saying, doing all those good deeds, coming towards the sinners, towards the tax collectors, even towards the Pharisees and scribes, trying to save all of them, coming towards me and you. What do we do? Are we going to reject both the baptism, the Baptist who is trying to scourge us for all our trespasses? And are we also going to reject him that presents himself just as a lamp right now? In order for us to acquire that salvation, we have to behave and to receive in our lives. For faith is not just a mental adhesion, adherence to some sort of knowledge. That will be Gnosticism. No, that is not faith. It is very sad that many of our Protestant brothers, out of what Martin Luther said, he said, he even wrote it, Peca, fort peca fortiter sed crede fortius, which means sin strong, but have even a stronger faith. How can that be? Really? That is no faith at all. If you have faith, then you would do what you believe. Remember chapter 25 of Matthew, when the Lord comes the second time in glory to judge us. He will not be asking us anything. We will be separated, some on his right, some on his left. And we, as we live in this life right now, are choosing by ourselves freely where, in which side are we going to be? For he says, I hungered and you feed me. I thirsted and you gave me to drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was ill and you attended me. In prison and you visited me. Foreigner and you received me in your home. Or either you did not do it. So as we live, we should rejoice that we are offered that salvation and we should act according to that. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all brothers.